Good evening. It was a dark and stormy night. A cloaked figure walks through a graveyard and pausing at one particular plot, takes shovel in hand and begins to dig. Upon reaching the casket, he pries open the lid to find a not-so-average corpse, and the one doing the exhumation isn't your average grave robber either. It's a Catholic priest. The sport of grave robbing and desecration of the dead goes back quite a ways for the Catholic Church. One could say that it's downright ghoulish, but the fact of the matter is that the Church just loves to dig up their own kind, especially those who were loved or venerated. Usually the bodies they were after belonged to one of prominence or station, you know, like a priest or a nun, but at times they also dug up their martyrs. The reason for this was to check the deceased for signs of what is called incorruptibility. Those who displayed this trait would be yanked out of the ground and dropped into a glass box for display. Sometimes those who have reached sainthood after death would be disinterred and chopped up into holy chunks to be sent around to the other churches. Nothing draws the parishioners better than the macabre presentation of body parts. It adds more of a carnival sideshow kind of a feel to a normally morose and depressing backdrop, which is the Catholic Church. And some displays actually look quite nice in that the saints that lay within the enclosures appear lifelike with no signs of decomposition at all. This is truly the sign of a saint. There are rules, of course, for being incorruptible. The Church has observational guidelines it follows during the act of desecrating corpses. One, the body must not show signs of normal decomposition to where it could be said to be of miraculous and not natural causes. Two, the body must remain flexible and is supposed to not be indistinguishable from sleep. Three, the body can't dry out like an Egyptian mummy and be all hardened, stiff. And finally, the body must not have been embalmed or otherwise preserved in any way. A good example would be St. Virginia. Ah, it looks just like she's sleeping. Here is another look at her without the funny hat. Oh, wait, that's a, a photo of uh, an Egyptian mummy kept at the London Museum. Now, this is what you've all come to see, St. Bernadette of Lourdes. For a dead gal, she's a real hottie. Oh, baby, oh, baby. And yes, that is really her inside that glass box. She died in 1879 and was exhumed 30 years later, so the story goes, and was discovered to be incorrupt and free of odor. Those who saw her were amazed at how well she held up after death. So they dumped her body back in the ground and dug her up again in 1919. Again, the devout were astonished. Met back in the ground for another six years before desecrating her one last time and sticking her into a glass display case in 1925. And there she stays, and here she is. Lovely, isn't she? It was nice that she had her makeup and nails done before she was buried. <laughs> but it's all bullshit. The first time she was dug up, a couple of doctors gave a statement that she was partially mummified. The entire body was shriveled, and the lower parts of the body had turned black, and her nose was dilated and shrunken. They reported that her whole body was rigid and sounded like cardboard when struck. In 1919, another doctor reported her body in the same condition, but added that there were patches of mildew and quite a notable layer of calcium salts. Her skin had also disappeared in some places. Finally, in 1925, her face had turned almost all black, and her eyes and nose were all shrunken, giving her, uh, her face the appearance of a black skull. Not to be deterred from their fucking insanity, the church called in a local artist who coated the face and hands with wax and then lovingly sculptured her to look like a 1920s hooker. And that is what everyone sees when they come to visit her, a rotted, mummified corpse covered in wax and stuck in a box. Now, I gotta tell you, in my book, that ain't no way to treat a lady. I guess when God decides to grant his saints incorruptibility, he needs a little help from time to time to make it happen. 
Why, I mean, what, you think he can just snap his ominent fingers and make it so? Of course not! The devout know this, of course. That's why when St. Vianney died, they fitted a wax mask on his face almost immediately after death. I mean, shit, <laughs> why wait? Then there's young St. Sylvan, who was said to have been martyred for his faith way back in 350 A.D. You can still see the blood where his throat had been slit. <laughs> nice. But believe it or not, Sylvan is not covered in wax. Nope. This is a dummy. Sylvan's skeleton is beneath it about ten feet down. Of course, there's no sign anywhere around saying this. Folks from all over the world are showing up thinking this is the real thing and believing his body was incorruptible. Meanwhile, his bones are ten feet down being chewed on by rats. And another example is the incorrupted body of St. Catherine of Bologna, who died in 1463. And she looks it. Are you wondering how they got her to stay up like that? Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing none on a stick. So whether it's a mummy, a dummy, or a body covered with wax, or, in Padre Pio's case, a lifelike silicone mask, the incorruptible saints are anything but. When we see mummification, science can tell us that this is the natural, expected process that happens to a body under the right circumstances. There's nothing miraculous about a natural, expected process. I suppose that some people could claim that decomposition should have taken place instead of mummification, and thus a miracle, but what, leaving a few strands of beef jerky stretched over the bones is the best that a miracle-creating super being was able to come up with? Incorruptible should mean incorruptible. The corpse needs to be flexible and lifelike, as if asleep. We've never seen anything remotely like that. There is no verifiable, viewable examples of supernatural incorruptibility anywhere on the planet. That's it. End of story. This is Super Soylent, and thank you for watching.